Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. What a delight to be with you. Thanks so much for being here. As I make the broadcast today, I am getting ready to leave uh, tomorrow for a very poor county in a state near to the state of Illinois where our ministry is located. And that state uh, that I'm going to in that very poor county is resulting in so many people losing hope and they're actually developing their own homemade drug making uh, enterprises in their own homes in this very once very productive farming area. People are now turning to making drugs to make a living and the trouble is they're not very good at hiding their work. I stopped there a few years ago and talked to the sheriff that was uh, there in the county. I wanted to find out what was going on with the lives of the people from his perspective. What a delight it is to go and offer the Word of God in places like that. You'll be praying for us as we not only teach the Word of God here on the radio, but also share the gospel in local churches in some places, some very difficult places. But today, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus. And some people think, well, there's a difficult place, the book of Leviticus. Well, you and I are finding some great profit for our own New Testament lives here in the book of Leviticus. If you can't open to Leviticus chapter 12, 23. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 15, and you may want to get something on which you can jot some notes as well. I have a gospel tract here. I'm excited about this tract. I always have been. I love handing this one out. I'll tell you about it here in just a moment, but I want to lead into the Bible study time this way. One of the most encouraging Bible verses for me personally over the years has been Philippians 1, 6, which says, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, the work that God began in me or any person is the work of salvation with the promise of making people like Jesus Christ. Now, that was God's work. He did the work by grace, but this side of heaven, I or any other believer is not going to fully achieve Christ-like appearance, are we? This verse encourages me by telling me that even that phase of God's saving work is in his hands and not mine. He began the work. He's going to perform the work. He will work in me his will, which is to be like Jesus. I say all that because today in Leviticus 23, we see two of the yearly feasts that were given to the Jews, and these two feasts were given so people would remember every year that it was was God providing all they needed to be a strong, holy people having all their needs met. God was the one who would bring the nation into the promised land. It was his power that would do that work, but it would be God's power and care that would keep them there. Oh, beloved friend, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then you and I must remember what God is doing for us today to enable us to walk worthy of his calling. Get your Bible and join me there. Leviticus chapter 23. The gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled Transformed. Just one word, transformed. It's the true story of a man named Don Price who got saved while in prison. Let me read you part of the story. He went to prison because he should have gone to prison. He broke the law and he got into trouble even when he was in prison and he was thrown into solitary confinement called the hole. Here's what he says in the tract. While in the hole, he, Don, heard a man reading the Bible. 
It angered Don. He said, if you wanted religion, why didn't you get it on the outside? Maybe some of us don't want to hear the Bible reading. Read it to yourself. But the track goes on to say, but the man read all the more. And through reading the Bible, hearing the Bible read, Don came to be convicted of sin and receiving Christ as his Savior. And Don Price turned out to be quite the gospel teller, quite the evangelist. It's a tremendous track. It's a good track for men. It's a good track, yes, for prison ministry. It's a good track to talk about the power of God to transform lives, thus the title Transformed. Oh, would you let me give you this track, please? If you just go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org, you can there order a free sample packet of our tracks, or at the end of the program, my announcer will give you ways by which you can give to us your name and address, and we'll send you that sample packet. It's free of charge. Our tracks are free as the Lord provides. Please let you and I become partners in gospel work. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 begins this way, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days, And ye shall offer a new meat offering, or that is grain offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring it out of your habitations, two wave loaves of two tenths deals, and shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. I'm jumping down to verse 21 now. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all of your dwellings throughout your generation. Stop, please, right there. Now, the verses preceding here, verses 4 to 8, are telling us about two feasts, the Feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread. That's what's listed there. These two feasts were given to help the Jewish people remember God's past, God's former redemptive work, and how he gave the nation a new start. But now, the two feasts before us here are the Feast of First Fruits and Pentecost. They're the ones listed next. These two feasts were to help the Jews remember what God was doing for them now, how he was supplying all of their needs, what he was doing for them in the present. Two feasts for the past, now two feasts for the present. Now, both of the these feasts here were centered around the harvest of the fields. The first fruit offering obviously offered to God the very first ripened grain. This happened, by the way, on the Sunday immediately after Passover. Passover happened on a Friday. The next day was a Sabbath day, a day of rest. And then on the next day, Sunday, would be the offering of the first fruits. That's when it would take place. From that day, the people of Israel would then count off seven weeks or 49 days. On day 50, which coincided with the end of the harvest, another offering was made. And this offering was made with two loaves baked, this time with leaven, a rising agent with leaven in them. God's promise to the nation of Israel was that if they would walk in the light of his covenant with them and obey his statutes, God would provide for their physical needs in the land and their harvest would be plenteous. All right. Those are the two feasts that are here before us that we're looking at today. First fruits and then Pentecost. What in the world do these have to do with you and me today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take them one at a time. First of all, the feast of first fruit. Now, this one is not hard at all to for us to apply. Jesus Christ himself is referred to as the first fruit of the resurrection. You're going to find that very term over in 1 Corinthians 15. Actually, believe it or not, Jesus arose from the dead, I guess on what day? On the day in which the Jewish people offered their literal or physical first fruit offering. The first fruit offering was essentially for the Jewish person a promise that there was more harvest to come. It was a promise that there would be plenty in the land. Well, when Jesus arose from the dead, he arose with a promise as well. 
Since Jesus arose from the dead with an immortal body, so then will all who trust in him as Savior. We will rise. Our corruptible body shall put on incorruptible. Our mortal shall put on immortality. Why? We have a first fruit offering in Jesus, and we will be raised as well. That's how we apply the feast of first fruits. We have a Savior who is alive from the dead. But what about the second feast, the feast of of Pentecost here? By the way, this feast is called uh, by a few names in the Bible. It's called the Feast of Pentecost. It's called the Feast of Weeks. It's called the Harvest Feast. But the bottom line is this. When a farmer harvests his crop, no matter what century it is that he lives, that harvest was designed to take care of him and his family all the way through until the next harvest. The harvest would provide all that was needed for life for him and his family. I find it really interesting that in Acts chapter 2 and the day of Pentecost, that's when God sent the Holy Spirit to the church. The Holy Spirit was given to New Testament saints. He indwells each and every true believer in Christ. The Holy Spirit baptizes or places each believer into the body of Christ. And by uh, the Holy Spirit, because he's given to us, uh, each believer, he becomes our down payment. God gives to us the Spirit to assure us that all he has promised to do for us in our salvation, he will perform. He's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. But wait a minute. Just as that farmer lives the rest of his year on the results of his earthly harvest, we who have the Holy Spirit live the rest of our lives on the results of the Spirit's provision. As children of God, we walk in the Spirit. As children of God, we pray through the help of the Spirit, Romans 8 says. As children of God, we learn through the teaching ministry of the Spirit. Through Because we're children of God, we love God and love one another through the Spirit of love. You and I, because we're children of God, because God has begun a good work in us, we are going to grow more and more into Christ-likeness. How? Through the fruit of of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's Pentecost feast for us. That's why you and I need to spend time being in the Word of God, letting the Spirit of God teach us, encourage us, feed us, so that we can live our lives walking in the Spirit, having all the provision of God. Oh, friend, I love another verse. It's Second Peter 1, 3, which says to God's people that God has given to us all that we need for life and godliness. Did you hear me? God has given to us all that we need for life and godliness. Because of the Holy Spirit, you and I who know Christ as Savior can live godly lives, can live victorious lives for the glory of Christ our Savior. Oh, friend, do you know Jesus as your Savior? The issue is, do you know him? Have you been born again? If you have not, it's because, number one, you don't know that you are a sinner. Or, number two, you know you're a sinner, but you don't think you need a Savior, somebody other than you, to take away the sin stain from your soul. You cannot remove the sin stain. You don't have the right chemical to do it, but there is one chemical. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. You need Jesus to be your Savior. Bow your head. Bow your heart. Come with a broken, repentant heart before God and say to him, God in heaven, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus died for me. Save my soul. Cling me because Jesus died for me. Do that today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, 
Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.